Welcome to another By the Numbers. Uh, this program has been designed to uh, help you better understand the ongoing budget process, especially when it comes to downtown departments and the intricacies of municipal budgets. Now, what we have done with this program is invited in stakeholders and asked them to give their insight on the town's financial picture and gain some pr perspective on the process uh, today. Uh, we have a returning guest. The gentleman is the chairman of the Whitman Finance Committee. Uh, we have Mr. Rick Anderson joining us, sir. Thanks for having me back. Welcome back. We thought we've had conversations, you and I, off camera about having a discussion after the process was done, at least one part of the process, because if anybody who's paying attention in Whitman, the process continues. Um, with your own words, tell us how tedious was the process to, to be able to balance the, the town's fiscal 20 budget? Well, the whole process itself evolves every year. It's, it's never the same. I mean, it's, you know, it definitely is a challenge uh, in some respects uh, year to year, some years more than others. Obviously, this past year was, was, was a financial challenge with, the, with, the, with the, you know, the budget situation that we had, as we talked about the first time mm. I was here. Um, so it involved a, a lot more meetings. It, it involved um, you know, a lot more collaboration with the Board of Selectmen and the town departments in order to get to where we are now. And quite frankly, we still have a long way to go. So. Well, when did the discussion um, start about having not one but two town meetings is that folks who remember who actually attended town meeting there were multiple town meetings you had the one the your annual in may and then a continuation in june well the continuation was more um, a result of the fact that the town voted for the debt exclusion in the election the only way that we could allocate funds um, for a lot of the capital projects that needed to be done was to have the town support a debt exclusion and to the town's credit, you know, they saw the, um, the need uh, to uh, expand our um, tax base in order to, to fund some of these projects. So that was really the need for the second one. So. What was the conversation like uh, in regards to a, a vote, a push for a debt exclusion? And did, did you see any resistance when it, the subject was uh, brought up? Well, I think if you recall, we were looking at two different scenarios, and there were really three different scenarios. There was, you know, one was a debt exclusion, and obviously well, one was an override. And the, the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee weren't really on the same page in the initial discussion on where we should go. Um, you know, there's obviously the uh, ability of the taxpayers to, to support um, increasing taxes is is paramount. I mean, we don't want to propose something that the taxpayers, are, you know, can't afford. Uh, quite frankly, so the discussion centered around: Do we go forward with a debt exclusion? Do we go forward with an override? So the the financial implications are pre pretty significantly different. Um, obviously, the debt exclusion gives us the more levy capacity that we needed by taking the payment for the police station out of that and uh, increasing our levy capacity. But the um, override is more of a long-term uh, uh, commitment. And I think where we're moving with that is in uh, you know, creating a long-term vision for what the town's finances will become. What was it like on election day and, and wondering what the results are like? Being a, a, a town official yourself, what was going through your mind? Are you like, I, I'm hoping that folks will see the need and it'll make things easier? And I think it's really about education. It's really about, uh, you know, educating the voters as to why th things need to be done. You know, it's no different from every line item or every warrant article on the budget at town meeting. The, t the taxpayers deserve an explanation, and they deserve to have a thorough explanation before they open their wallets and, um, you know, put out some extra money to get these things done. So, Do you sometimes get that the residents, folks who aren't in the know, don't realize that if you as an, elect as a, an elected or an appointed official says, this, this is something we need to do, and they're like, oh, how dare he raise my tax? Do they not realize that you also are, are being a part of... of 
you know, this uh, override or debt exclusion or anything that is going to help the town financially? I think that does help. It, it helps if you, you know, put on your taxpayer hat while you're trying to explain what you're looking to do. Mm. And I think, you know, by people seeing that, you know, it, 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 there is obviously a component of ability to pay. Mm. Um, but obviously, I, I thoroughly supported the debt exclusion and, and support an override if it, you know, if it keeps the community uh, going with the same services that we've come to expect, I don't mind opening my wallet and paying a little extra. So, but you're right, Kevin, there are people who are definitely not really in tune to what's going on and, you know, obviously have their own opinions about what we should be doing or shouldn't be doing. Okay. So success uh, during the, the town election, the debt exclusion passes. Um, so you're getting ready for the second town meeting in June, June 17th. Uh, what was it like setting up, setting that up and putting together a, a, another warrant or at least tweaking the warrant for the continuation? So the warrant that was left from the initial town meeting included um, capital articles that were more than the debt exclusion could afford to fund. So what needed to be done was that we needed to meet to prioritize and figure out, you know, do, and we really don't want to uh, go right to the limit. Um, we want to make sure we put some back into stabilization that we used. As you recall, in fiscal 19, we took a substantial amount of money out of stabilization to balance the budget that year. So, again, it was kind of just a stopgap measure. So, mindful of that, we needed to make sure that we set aside still, you know, if we are looking at the fall and the town is not, doesn't have an appetite to support an override, we don't want to make sure we spend down all of our reserves. So that, that, that was quite a focus. But, you know, working with the Board of Selectmen to try to determine which articles to move forward with at that second meeting was um, the major focus for the Finance Committee. As this program is designed to to better inform folks who might be who might be attending the meeting or at home watching it or maybe they're watching the replays of it, um, there was a, a another there was a special um, town meeting within that second um, uh, town meeting itself. What's the general purpose of, of of that? Is it a matter of being able to move the monies around correctly? Um, to be able to take action for the continuation of the, talk to us about yeah, that. Specifically, there are uh, warrant articles that are, you know, of a unique nature, and that's why they're put into the special, and that's usually why we suspend the annual and move into the special to ar act on those particular articles first. So, and again, that's the Board of Selectmen to, to determine which um, articles should be put in the special and which will go in the to general uh, warrant. Okay. Um, so the most recent uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting, did, it was a little bit of an appointment as their uh, formation of a new group. Uh, let me make sure I say this right, the Budget Override Evaluation Committee. Talk to me about the purpose of this, of this group. Well, I think it's a continuation of a budget uh, subcommittee that we had established uh, last year in advance of this entire budget process for fiscal 2020. Um, then Selectman Scott Lambiasi was uh, the chair of that committee, and it really just started to get traction. And uh, it, it's looking into uh, developing policies and long-term financial planning for the town. And I think it's great that we finally, um, you know, formally appointed the members of this committee. And I think that, the, you know, we have a great cross-section of uh, the community. And uh, I, I think they're going to look hard at uh, what has happened in the past, but more of an emphasis of what we're going to do in the future. It's an interesting dynamic. And before we get into the nuts and the bolts of, of this, uh, this committee, um, during the election, we're sitting here talking about uh, the debt exclusion passing, but there was also kind of a little bit of members of the Finance Committee and Board of Selectmen kind of passing in the hallways is, you lost a member, but you acquired a member. Talk, talk to me about that. Yeah, so that is a unique situation. Um, but again, um, you know, I think that people run for office, um, you know, for the same reason as people volunteer for the boards and committees on the town. You know, um, they're looking to use their experience uh, to help the town weed through these difficult financial waters. Mm -hmm. 
And I think, um, you know, the fact that uh, Justin now sits on the Board of Selectmen, I, I, great. I mean, the town really spoke loudly when they decided that he was going to be elected as a Selectman representing the town. And to Scott's credit, to being appointed back onto the Finance Committee in Justin's place, I think, it, you know, it, it's, it's great that uh, Scott is still um, looking to help out in that capacity. And I also look at Scott's municipal experience. We did have him. He did do a... Um, a segment here on By the Numbers, and he proved invaluable with his knowledge where he is somebody who works with the town of Duxbury, understands the ins and outs and the budget. So I would see him as being uh, an asset that, that is, it's like you're, you're losing, you, you may have been losing this, this young rising star who is now on the Board of Selectmen, but yet you have, you've acquired this veteran of municipal services who understands it in and out. And I think that would, if anything, it's kind of a good exchange between the two boards. I think it is too. And I, and I think, you know, if you look at it in the big picture, we're still all on the same team. You know, it just uh, depends on um, which meeting you're attending. But I think uh, both Justin and Scott represent the best and their uh, experience and commitment to the future certainly can't be overstated. Talk to me about assembling this, uh, this budget uh, override evaluation committee. I, I mean, what went into who was going to serve on it? And I believe there are, what, 11 members? Yeah, 11 members, yeah. So the um, town administrator sent an email and uh, requested m me to make an appointment of two members of the finance committee to this committee and, you know, made some suggestions of who we thought would be, you know, uh, bring a, a, a good perspective um, and a really a well-rounded, uh, diverse group. And uh, so... Uh, I selected uh, Scott, uh, obviously, and uh, Dave Cadero, uh, the vice chairman of the finance committee, to both serve. So I think they're going to do a great job. Now, I noticed that you got two selectmen you have, and two selectmen who have prior service on the finance committee, uh, Randy Lamatina and Justin Evans. Uh, you've got a couple of folks from the school department. You've got, of course, the uh, school superintendent is going to serve on this. Mm -hmm. That's very good. That's admirable. And a uh, new member to the school committee. Don Byers, who's also proven her worth, especially during the, the budget crunch. Yes, and Don continues to, um, you know, give us a perspective uh, from a different point of view. Um, obviously, uh, her connection to the school um, is, is important, and, uh, but she also does a lot of research. And the research that she forwards to the selectmen and the finance committee really helps uh, to get a perspective on, um, you know, the kind of a different look on what we should be doing in the future. Now, I see you got a couple other members who are town departments, uh, Bruce Martin mm -hmm. and Tim Grano, both uh, with the uh, invaluable knowledge when it comes to uh, to budgets and what goes what goes into putting them together. But I see you got two citizen at large members as well. How important is it that at least you have a couple of members of the public being a part of this? Well, I think both of these uh, citizens have, uh, you know, shown an interest in helping and shown an interest in uh, making sure that all thoughts and points of view are taken into consideration. So I think having two citizens at, at large are, is going to be an, a, an important part of, of this committee. What do you, what, what's your understanding as the mission of this committee? I mean, is it necessarily just to put, you know, take a look at all the budgets and just, and understand if, in fact, an override is needed, or is it something other? I think it's 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 a few things, and you know that is the challenge with a committee like this is to stay focused on the mission of the committee because when this budget committee initially started with the fiscal 2020 budget. You know, the, we're, we're really looking into developing policies and, uh, you know, kind of guidelines for both the Finance Committee and the Selectmen to move forward with uh, creating an outline. And um, I think uh, that's probably the, the, the best part of it. Mm. Is there a thought that whether they'll discuss the need for an override? Because my conversation with a couple of individuals was, well, I'm not... I'm not immediately here to, 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 to be a part of the discussion to say, yes, I'm going to put a stamp on an override. I, I want to take a look and see if, in fact, an override is needed. Yeah, so that's one of the important things right out of the gate for this committee is to, I think, the, you know, the initial part of it is to, to look back uh, to, you know, what we have needed and um, then to look forward into five-year projections of 
estimated budget. It's very difficult to predict mm -hmm. two years, even one year into the future. So for the committee to look ahead and to make long-term planning um, part of it, but definitely the focus initially is to get an, an education uh, piece together for the taxpayers. And their recommendation may be for an override, in, in you know in the discussions you know they my guess is that it's just still something that we need to do so I, I know that regular meeting selectmen's meetings that there is a that it, you do have a citizen who is or a couple of citizens who've gotten up and asked members of the board of selectmen and asked the town administrator Frank Lynham as to how things are coming along with um, a, a long-term plan or a five-year plan a strategic plan uh, talk to me about the importance of uh, having such documentation to help guide this community. Well, I think it's important because, you know, it, people get frustrated when they don't see progress being made. Uh, even, even though a lot of times things are happening behind the scenes and, you know, from a, a monthly selectman's meeting, you know, someone can't really see progress being made. But I think it's important for people to stand up if they feel that we're not moving in the right direction or quickly to a, a point where we need to make some long-term planning decisions, that they be able to speak up. Um, I, I, from the beginning of, of being uh, appointed as the chairman of the finance committee, insist that every member has a voice. I mean, if there's something that they want to bring up, um, they're more than welcome to bring it up. And, um, you know, we, sh we have an obligation to have a collective decision of where we're going to go. The Finance Committee, the Board of Selectmen, or even the town. Knowing that usually the summer is usually the quieter time, usually after town meeting, you know, a lot of boards and committees in, in Whitman and a lot of surrounding com communities, they go on summer schedule. But it appears as though the town of Whitman isn't going to be following that trajectory this year. Uh, are you finding yourself where you're holding regular meetings with the finance committee members to kind of get ready for fiscal 21? Yeah, we've, we have been meeting regularly right up until last week. Um, you know, we're, we're transferring line item transfers and, uh, you know, uh, reserve fund transfers are part of the end of year uh, responsibility for the uh, finance committee. So up until last week, we were still working on fiscal 2020. But yes, we're, we're looking to probably meet earlier than ever, even though last year we met, well, you know, quite a few times and twice with every town department, which is unusual. So I think this year is going to be the same. And, and what's even interesting is if we look at a, a higher level, we look at what's going on with the state of Massachusetts. Uh, as we're speaking, as this, this show is being taped, we still don't have a budget for the Commonwealth. Right. Does that concern you knowing that? Or does it make you say, okay, you know, we here is a municipality, we struggled, and look at the state right now, they're fighting it out in a conference committee. Last in the nation, you know, yeah. the budget, yeah, yeah. So that, that, that you know, th there's challenges are similar. Um, so, yeah, we, we still need to stay focused on what we need to do as a municipality, but we definitely look to the state uh, to try to find out what the direction is. And, you know, uh, one of the things, too, it's a little bit off the question, is about the unfunded, you know, uh, t mandates from the state. And I see very recently that the state is considering mandating a full-time kindergarten as, as another unfunded liability. So this is something that, you know, we have to be mindful of as a finance committee when we look to allocate resources to our regional school district. What's your understanding as to what the district is offering now? Is it offering any such full-time program or is it kind of just part-time in nature at this time? Yeah, right now it is, um, uh, the, the, the school has various options, but it's one of the few uh, regional or uh, municipalities that does not offer a full day kindergarten. So will that change in the future? Quite possibly. Will it because the state mandates it? Quite possibly. Knowing that, you're that we're still waiting for uh, a budget from the state to be put forth and uh, again, continue the process because it'll go to the governor, the governor will vote, vote, veto certain things and then the legislature may end up acting and, and putting things back because they have, they have the numbers per se. How does that affect um, Whitman in any numbers that ye, that were put together and voted on during town meeting? Will there be any changes or anything significant that, that you're hearing 
uh, what kind of an effect does that have on a town? Yeah, um, obviously whatever the state does has an effect on the town, but it doesn't really have an immediate effect on what we do. But having this uh, subcommittee uh, together and meeting through the summer, I think they're going to be well positioned to react to the things that happen out of the state. And, and obviously then make plans for where we need to go with the town. Now, are you going to find yourself attending these meetings or viewing these meetings just to kind of see where what's going on and do you expect to have any conversations outside of those those uh, meetings well i have great confidence in the two representatives that are going to be on that committee from the finance committee and um, we will have a report from them every meeting so well i probably will not attend the meetings unless i'm asked as the chair to attend um, but like i said i i have great confidence in all the members of that committee to to get started and and really rolling up the sleeves and getting the job done and this is a little bit different than like, because I think you served on the, the Building Projects Committee. Is this, is this, this a different uh, type of a, a committee? Yeah, well, yes. Um, also was um, the chairman of the Capital Improvement Advisory Committee for many years as well. So that's going to be part of the charge of this committee is to prioritize the needs for our capital projects. That is the real uh, important uh, chore uh, that needs to be done. We need to have a better five-year plan for capital projects. So that's going to be one of the one of the main things that this com committee is going to get at right out of the gate. So as we are wrapping up uh, this first of many uh, in phase two, anything I haven't asked you in regards to where we are in the process, whether it was just a little bit of a review back for the uh, town meetings to moving forward with this new committee, anything I haven't asked you about you feel is kind of important to at least uh, telling our viewer? No, I think you covered quite a lot of where we're going to go. I, I just want to emphasize the need for all of the town committees to work collaboratively. It, it, and it has moved in that direction because, as I said, the Finance Committee isn't a one member um, in, in the town when they make recommendations to town meeting isn't one committee. So it really, it really takes every member of each of the members of the Board of Selectmen, members of the Finance Committee, the, as you mentioned, the citizens at large, everyone that is a stakeholder in this process to have a voice. And I, I think we're moving in that direction very well. And we want to thank you for tuning into a program like this and making it popular uh, as to wanting to know what's going on. And it's also important to have your input as to whether it's various guests, questions to put forth, uh, topics to, to tackle when it comes to uh, the finances of this community and, and when we talk about budgets. Uh, if you want to be able to share that information, info at whca.tv is your way. And we look forward to hearing more from you and hearing from some of the guests that we have lined up. You've been watching By the Numbers. <laughs>